In this video, I'll go over the predicted results in more detail. For the training data, I'll go back to loading an external file in the R format. This is just because it's easier to load a large static data set from a file than to build each instance up individually. I'll still build the testing or prediction data set up in the Java code. I've modified the data set specification a bit. I added a gender attribute and have added additional values to the skiing attribute to indicate whether skiing or snowboarding and specific attributes for going to the park, including playing on the swing set, merry-go-round, or just going for a walk. I'll load the training data set from the file system, create the prediction instances as before, and get the result object. Now call the all predictions method to get a two-dimensional array of double values. The first array, or outer array, will contain each instance, and the inner array will be the predicted values in the order they appear in the list of attributes. Even though the data type is a double, the actual values will be just integers, indexes within the list of attribute values. That is, a zero is the first in the list of nominal values, one is the second, and so on. To get the actual predicted values, not just the indexes, I'll add another small method which will get the correct value from the attribute object using the index. Rerunning the test, we can now see the values are in the predictions. Now, a simple example using a filter. Filters are used to pre-process data. This may be replacing attributes with different values, reordering attributes, reformatting values, and many others. I'll show a simple example where we can remove instances where a particular attribute contains a particular value. So I'll add a new method to filter out some data. I'll create a remove with values filter, and we'll set the options. Dash C is the attribute number. This starts with one, not zero as a typical index would. Use dash L to specify the attribute value number. Probably the easiest way to get all the options and values is to test using the Weka or Mecha Explorer. You can also find details in the API documentation or just look in the source code. I'll add an additional case to execute the model using the filter data set and we can now see how it modified the number of instances in the data set and the final predictions. So that's it for this video. We looked a little more depth in the result object and the predictions and a very quick example of using a basic filter.